Right Oval fans, hit the like button, hit subscribe, hit the bell icon, select all. That way you don't miss out on new content. And follow me on social media. Links are in the description below. This is from a brief IG live. I was able to get on with uh, Richard from the Oval. Uh, this happened, I want to say, a few weeks before the finale itself. Uh, we talked for a decent amount of time. He's a real cool guy. Uh, maybe I can land an interview with him in the near future. But uh, we had a good time talking about the Oval and other work Tyler Perry's done. And ironically enough, the Instagram live timed out on us because I didn't realize how late into the live stream he was in before I actually had the chance to jump aboard with him. But uh, again, I hope you enjoy this chat. And uh, yeah. Make sure you follow Mr. Javon Johnson on social media. I'll be sure to leave links in the top comment below. One more person in before we get out of here. Connecting with, what's up? Hey, how's it going? Good, man. What's going on with you, brother? Hey, nothing much. A big fan of the show. I've been seeing you on TV since, uh, what, Barbershop 2 when I was a kid. Oh man, you see, you just you just made my gray hairs all pop out when you said that, bro. <laughs> I mean, you, I got you, a few right you here. You said it so youthfully. I just, it just my, now my back hurt. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, barbershop too, man. You you went back, man. That's that's shoot, maybe that's over ten years ago, man. Yeah, um, that might be about, that about fifteen. Is about fifteen years ago? In two thousand four, then you on Daddy's Little Girls, House of Pain, uh. You were in the Boo Medea movie, too, as a reverend. I mean... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played a lot of reverends, man. <laughs> yeah, but I'm yeah. a big fan of the show. I've been reviewing Tyler Perry stuff since about 2014. Okay, okay. Yeah, when so when you say seeing... review, you have your own show? Uh, YouTube channel, actually, over 100,000 subscribers. What's your, what's, your, uh, what's your channel? The Haves and the Have-Nots Review. Oh, the Have and the Have-Nots Review. Why you you review? Do you review the Oval? Of course. But it's called the Have and the Have Nots Review. Well, long story short, I was in college when the Haves and the Have Nots came out, so I was oh. just blogging at the time. But then a friend of mine was like, dude, take your voice, get a microphone, start a YouTube, and right. the Haves and the Have Nots blew up. And as time went on, I added if loving you was wrong, the right. pains. And then when he came to BET, Sisters, The Oval, Ruthless, bruh, I watch him, I review them all. And Greenleaf, too. And Greenleaf? Yeah, I'm, so glad, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad your friend told you to take your voice to you know make somebody because you have a you have a good voice, man. I don't know if you do voiceover or anything like that, but you you have a good strong voice. Oh, thank you. But so, yeah, yeah. But I you was, need to change the name of the show, though. Yes, <laughs> but the Oval is about to go on hiatus. To be fair. Yeah, but but it, we almost 25 episodes yet all this time to, to change the title, man. But and then and then the half and half nonsense is like that is 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 done, right? It's coming back in September. Is it coming back in September? Yes. But then that's then that's the end of the show, right? It's the, it's the final season. It's the final season, right? Apparently, season seven was supposed to be the final season, but then they filmed season eight last year, and then allegedly there's a season nine coming as well. Oh, so I don't know about all the rumors. I don't know about all the rumors. Uh, I got a lot of sources. I uh, see. You know a lot more. Than, okay, I got to go to your channel see what you talking about. So I can know what's oh, going yeah. on. I'll send you a link, but uh. I, I have so many. What I do is I review the show, but the reason the channel blew up is because I do these in-depth analysis on characters and theories and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So it's been a fun ride. And I think the Oval, I got to ask, I, I know you probably got to get off here before the show comes on, but, yeah. but when it comes to Richard, first of all, when Nancy was like, we have to pay for the funeral, I'm thinking, but Nancy, nobody in the house has a job. Richard has been out of work since <laughs> episode three. Yeah. Episode. And, yeah. And, I, and I, I cannot believe that Barry and Richard were responsible for shooting the old man, the deacon through the window, because mm -hmm. I'm like, I know Richard and Barry were fighting for the gun, right? Mm -hmm. But the gun to me was like facing in a downward position. And then Richard clearly stated, but Barry, there's a hole in the door. So it's like, right. it's almost like a JFK with the magic bullet theory. It's like, so the bullet would have had to travel through the door at a downward angle, mm -hmm. jump back up and somehow maneuver through the window to shoot that old guy in his sleep. Right, and, right. And then when it comes to Richards and Nancy's family, it's like, nope, everybody says, shut your mouth, don't say a word to the police. 
but everybody does the complete opposite. It's like when Richard begged Nancy, no, Richard wants, no, I got to go out. I got to go down there and see Barry. I got to tell yeah. him not to talk to the cops. And yeah. Nancy goes down there. And he talks she to the cops. basically tells him everything but to not talk to the police. I'm thinking, right. you got Barry to confess to killing Ruth, even though right. he really didn't do it. And I'm like, you, and then you go back to the hospital cell. Well, well, you know, it's clear, it's clear to me at this point that uh, Nancy does not does not have the same type of relationship with Barry that I do. Not and, at all. Yeah, so it doesn't, you know, it's atypical in terms of a mother and a son versus yeah. father and son. Uh, but but I, I, I understand Nancy in terms of her animosity towards him and her resentment towards him. So even though Richard might say something that I feel is in the best interest of Barry, it might not be in Nancy's heart when dealing with Barry. You know what I mean? Because they have so much friction between the two of them that if I say, hey, go down there and tell him this, because that's the best thing to do, she might get down there and get distracted by her feelings about how she didn't feel about him. And it never comes out the way I, I you know, I, I would like for it to come out. So, I mean, yeah. that's how I look at that. You know what I mean? That they have so much friction and conflict between the two of them that, and they, and they both tend to get caught up in that, you know, you know what I mean? And in the, in the, sometimes it's, it's a level of disrespect that happens. And oh, yes, yeah. So, and there's a lot of, I mean, I don't know how many times she slapped him to this point, you know, a few times he's, Three. yes, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So she, she's smacking him around, you know, you know, that's, that's, they have a volatile relationship. And I think sometimes that, that clouds her judgment in terms of what's the best thing to do for him yeah. and for the family sometimes. Yeah, there are a couple uh, things on that. It's like, number one, I was just furious because it's all, well, it's almost like she always assumes the worst about Barry, despite the mm -hmm. fact that everybody makes a point to say he's had a pretty clean record throughout his life up until this mm -hmm. point when Callie was kidnapped. And it always irked me because she kept going on about how my big knife is missing. And I'm like, but didn't Nancy have a knife when Ruth and the cult members came in at the end of episode one? And mm -hmm. then they took the knife and shoved her down. And I'm like, isn't that the missing knife? And mm -hmm. then on top of that, you look at the fact that Richard, it's almost like, you know, he's kind of being the middleman of the animosity between Nancy and Barry. Right. And it's like, everybody's like, hey, we got to get you back to the White House because everything's falling apart without you. But like, <laughs> Richard's having a hard enough that's, time. That's the last place I need to be at the White House right now with that mess. <laughs> and my mess. <laughs> and I feel bad because if you go back to episode one, Nancy was indirectly responsible for the whole Cali situation leading to right. Ruthless, which, to be honest, in my opinion, Ruthless is the best show right now that Tyler Perry has put on Viacom. I know that sounds a bit biased, but The Oval has two episodes left, and yeah. Ruthless still has half a season, so my judgment yeah. might be a bit askew like Sisters, right. you know, because right. they had their entire season. But right. then Richard, I was always wondering... Why didn't why did Richard let Barry go with Gail up the stairs? Because Gail was clearly drunk and it didn't seem like the proper White House protocol to let mm -hmm. Barry go with the first daughter when it was Richard's responsibility. That was my yeah. thing. Yeah. I, I know everything is about set up because obviously certain yeah, things yeah. had to happen in motion. Not to mention, Barry hasn't even gotten his phone back, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I don't remember if he ever got his phone back. Barry hasn't gotten his phone. Gene hasn't gotten her car yet. Richard hasn't yes. been told by Donald that he's got the job back. I know Sam and Priscilla came by and said, hey, right. they're going yes. to hire you back. But obviously, yeah. you know, you can't go back just yet. But, yeah, yes. I mean, we only got three episodes. And I know if there's one thing Tyler Perry does is he writes one heck of a finale. In yeah, we, we we're building to that finale. You see, it's already getting towards He's pushing the envelope already uh, these last few episodes. With the drama, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I'm definitely looking for that finale, man. Um, uh, so, so what do you? So for the people that's watching that don't know about your show, how so when when the Oval airs tonight, how how long does it take you to come out for your review? When, when should you look for the review? About 24 hours, so you should look for it by so pretty quickly Thursday. Yeah, because I know. Saying. The thing about BET is, like, I always laugh so hard whenever I'm doing my reviews, and the first thing people say, there were too many dang commercials, and I'm like, well, advertisers, what can you do? And sometimes I'm live tweeting as well, but 
Right. Uh, I think that when it comes to the channel, you'll definitely get more than you bargain for. It's not the average everyday YouTube channel. It's not just me doing a review. We're going to go in depth. It's like, hey, it's episode 23, but we're going to go back to episode two to pull back from this character's dynamic. Right. Because so you really focus on the whole scope of the whole season. Everything, everything yeah. from top to bottom. And trust mm -hmm. and believe people always like, they used to, well, honestly, people still think I work for Tyler Perry and I don't. I'm just a fan like everyone else. I just overthink a lot. Oh, okay. So, so yeah. did you used to work with Tyler? Never. I have never oh, worked think, with Tyler. They think, they think you do, yeah. yeah you know, I've seen, I've seen a couple of these reviews, uh, these type of shows that you do on YouTube. And the one, the, the ones, um, there's, there are a number of those that when I, when I checked them out, at the end of it, I said, really, all they did was just recap the show. Exactly. And I say they didn't do anything beyond that other than tell you what happened. Mm -hmm. And it's I like, feel like, spicy. what's the point of that? You know what I mean? Yes, yeah, so you got to spice it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I appreciate it. So you definitely send me a link, man. I'm gonna, I want to check, uh, check you out. We'll do. And, and hey, and if you ever want to interview, I'll be more than happy to I do one with you. That way we can promote your social media as well. Oh, cool, man. Cool. I, I don't know what I'm going to do until you change the name of the show. So I'm, I'm a little, I'm in my feelings about that because... But does I don't it know help? how the have and the have nots just get the, the the marquee of all these other shows. And you said Ruthless is the best show to you. So at least call it Ruthless. I, I, I said it's the best Viacom show he has right now. Okay. All right. I'll give I you that. Disclaimer. I'll give you that. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, people ask me, why don't you change the channel name? I mean, I got like 750 business cards and... Uh, it's kind of the branding. I know hey, what Vista Just go to Vista, I mean. man. Just go to Vista Print. No matter your thoughts, you know, it's, it's cheap enough. You can I mean, re-up on those cards. I mean, I got the, I got like you get, Vista Print boxes right here. I mean, you so. get 5,000 cards for $5 at Vista Print, man. Ain't no big, that's, you know, talking well, about that's, be, that's a good collateral damage right there to, to get the right <laughs> To be fair, my custom YouTube URL is the haves and the have nots review. So even if I change the name, it would still pop up whenever people look for it. I mean, even here on Instagram, the right, H -A -A -N, in. all my posts are from the variety of shows and I do my best to tag as many cast members in them as possible. But one other question, because I know you touched upon this with another person. Mm -hmm. When it comes to Barry's rage, that's been my biggest question of the entire season. Like each episode, we're kind of stacking. You know, that's what Tyler Perry does. The Oval was overwhelming at first because we got like 50 characters in the first episode. I yeah, mean, because yeah. I was on my YouTube doing a live stream earlier and I was having a back and forth with people about what show, it was two categories. What's the best show between Ruthless, Bruh, The Oval and Sisters and which show had the best theme song? It was <laughs> neck and neck between Ruthless and The Oval. And over, the yeah, yeah. Oval has that urgency in the instrumental version of it. But it's like, I love the visuals of it. Like, you know, all the characters show up. It got like their police files and whatnot and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you got to pay attention because there's so many characters. But then again, there are so many characters not in the theme song. So yeah, sometimes yeah. I think the Lily storyline, I think, was the most fascinating because for the longest time, it felt so disconnected from everything. But mm -hmm. then when we got around the episode of Five Families, that's when it's like, oh, snap, every everybody became a Lily fan at that point. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Richard storyline, now every nobody would... They could, Jeremy, what are your thoughts on Nancy? What is Richard going to do? And it's like, I actually did a video on that yesterday. But I know tonight <laughs> yeah. we're going to have to spice it up because yeah, now yes. it's the dynamic of you had Nancy and Barry going neck and neck the entire season, but now you got friction between Richard and Nancy as yeah, well. Yeah. And yeah, I'm just yeah. thinking... Again, who in this house is working? Because it's like, <laughs> where does the bloody knife come from? Sharon's apparently moving out. Barry's right. coming home. And then there's that resentment between everybody saying, Nancy is out of her mind for saying that, why are you putting the blame on picking he's dead instead of saving your son? But it right. seems like Richard and the family are good people, but they understand that in the world they're in, you know, in Washington and whatnot, sometimes you have to kind of set aside your morals just to survive right. because they understand it's like, well, Richard's in the White House. Well, he was in the White House. Right, so right. if his son goes down for something like a murder, that could look bad on the White House as a whole. So it's almost like uh, you have to bury those secrets in order to make everything in public look good. But right. before uh, we, end, I know I keep saying this because it seems like every time I'm about to, you know, say my last question, it rolls to another. It's why <laughs> 
The channel has over. Yeah, it's your channel, man. That's what you do. That's what you do. Keep talking. Yeah, yeah. I think my favorite scene was from the episode The Fishbowl between you and Gail after you saved her from being assaulted oh, in the, by in the, in my, in my truck. Yes. It yeah, was yeah. one of the few scenes where, and I tell people, some people always say this, you know, Tyler Perry writes this stuff over the top. He makes everything so dramatic. He gives black people a negative stereotype and whatnot. It's like, the thing about it is, you pay attention to that, but I think my favorite scenes in the show are when you have those quiet scenes yeah. where you get to know yeah. the kid. It's yeah. not always about their attitude and rude behavior. It's the so it's the vulnerability behind it that leads yeah. to some of the best scenes. So I was really hoping that at some point Richard would go back to the White House mm -hmm. and then maybe Gail might show a little bit of kindness because right. if memory serves, Priscilla was the first one and I think she brought up, was it Emmett Till about yeah, the yeah, most cost Priscilla, yeah, yeah. And then that kind of piggybacked into the conversation with Richard in the truck. And right. then when she yeah. brought up Emmett Till, Richard was like, oh, so you know about Emmett Till? Yeah. yeah. It was kind of like <laughs> that first time. And to be honest, I think that might have been the first time in Gail's history because I think her family, what, they were, Hunter was mayor, governor, mm, and then right. president. So she's probably always been that person to – Probably one of the best scenes of the series so far. Right, right. I'll yeah. say this uh, because my time is going to wind down here. Okay. Um, in terms of the madness of like Richard and Nancy, all the stuff they're going through, we got to remember this too. The arrival of this first family is like the arrival of COVID nineteen. Oh, I like that. We never knew. Like nobody was prepared for this. Like this no. is not the norm. So. Uh, the Halston's family in the White House have been thrown into an unknown charted territory where we are not prepared to behave or respond in the way, you know, nobody said, hey, chaos is coming and this might happen, so y'all go ahead and talk about how y'all gonna handle this situation or you've been trained to, no, nobody's prepared for this. So nope. it, it's kind of like somebody just walked in your house and threw an alligator in the house and, and just closed the door and you with your family and like, these are people you love, but there's an alligator in here out of nowhere somebody going to get disrespected or mistreated or some because yeah. you weren't prepared. You were not prepared to deal with an alligator being thrown into the middle of your house and you all blocked in the house. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. a lot of what's going on and then, you know, you know, even with Nancy having her, her secret. So when she says something like, how could you do this to, to Picky? And Richard's like, well, this is our son. On the outside looking in, you say, well, come on, Nancy, this is obvious. But if you step into that world and you realize this is uncharted, she's never been here. She's oh, never, and this, and this secret has just come out and, and, and her being a mother and the pain of that loss and not, and, and living and that being co coveted by a lie and, and, and deception, like, and her, and even her, her struggle with religion, her faith, like, there's a lot on her, uh, as much as there's a lot on Barry. That's not his normal, Barry is not the normal Barry. He's not, he's not the pre-hunter family, first family Barry, you know, he's the reactionary Barry. And, and Richard, is the is the one to me that sees that and is just trying to say, look, let's 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 keep it together. Let's you know, because on the other end, he's he's like, okay, I, I know this family is crazy. I'm trying to manage that, but now I'm trying to manage my family, and 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 this is new to Richard too. Like Richard oh, never had to, yeah, he's never had to deal with Barry acting like this. Like he's just as confused. Like yeah, you know, when he when 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 I talk about he blacked out. I never seen that. I think something when I tell him, I think you need to go talk to the pastor. Like. I don't know what's wrong with you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh so my I, God. That's yes. right. You told him to speak to the pastor moments before he drove through the uh, <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So so I think that we have to keep in mind that this is this is COVID for them. 